So this uh, short recording is about the earthquake that happened in July 2025, just off the southern coast of Spain. While magnitude 5.3 isn't that large in the global scheme of things, for Europe it is quite large, and the Iberian Peninsula is geologically quite interesting, so I thought I'd record a short video about it. So this is the USGS earthquake catalogue for the last month for the region. So you can see Europe is very quiet. There are some things happening out in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, some things associated with the subduction zone around the Hellenic Arc, and this is the a magnitude 5.3 that happened just off the coast of Spain uh, earlier today. So you can see it's a very, very seismically quiet region. So this is quite unusual. This red line here, through here, and coming round through uh, the Rif in North Africa, then into the Betics in Spain. This marks the uh, paleo subduction zone of the closure of the Neotethys Ocean. So a hundred million years ago, there was a small bit of ocean crust that was growing between Africa and Europe. This was the Tethian Seaway. And around about 60 to 50 million years ago, that started closing. So subduction propagated from the Tethian Ocean in the east, westwards along the southern European margin and the northern African margin. And between the Betics and the Rif, this culminated in closure of Africa and Europe and subduction stopped. The small bit of continental crust that was the Alboran is positively buoyant, so it doesn't go down. It's lighter. It's lighter than the mantle. It doesn't go down. And so the subducting slab that's denser in the mantle ended up breaking off. We see that now in seismic tomographic images underneath Spain at about as a fast region, about 500 kilometers depth. So that's the founded slab. So there's no subduction happening anymore underneath uh, Spain. But Africa is still very slowly moving northwards, being dragged by bits of the uh, subducting slab, which are still subducting further east of here. And that's then causing Spain to have to move out of the way. It's gradually moving westwards, and so Spain is getting out of the way by a process called indent tectonics, which I discussed when I was talking about the Myanmar earthquake. So what we see currently is a dominance of strike slip faults, predominantly horizontal movement on the faults, typically bounding the edges of basins. Uh, as Spain is moving uh, to the west, out of the way of the gradually northwards moving Africa. So if we zoom in, this is uh, the southern coast of Spain. Uh, there's Gibraltar. Malaga, Alicante is up here, and this is Cabo de Gata. It's just off the coast of Cabo de Gata that this earthquake was. It has a, a focal mechanism solution which looks like this. This is from the Spanish uh, seismic monitoring from the Instituto Geográfico Nacional. So we have vertical nodal planes. So these are strike slip faults where the motion is horizontal and either we have motion on this plane with the west side moving to the south and the east side moving to the north or we have motion on this plane with the north side moving eastwards and the south side moving westwards they're the two possible solutions and we'll see later that is the first solution I mentioned, this north-south um, fault plane, which is most likely for this fault. This is the felt map, okay? So this is where people actually felt the movement from the earthquake. You can see it decays quite quickly. The earthquake was very shallow, at only about three kilometers depth, but it was felt over quite a wide range. So quite unusual for European earthquakes. There are subduction related earthquakes that we see in northern Spain. They tend to be deeper, 
The deepest ones, which have happened below central Spain here, have been up to 500 kilometers depth, and they're related to the foundering subducting slab. This was at 3 kilometers depth, so not associated with, with subduction at all. And the focal mechanism solution suggests it's not subduction, it's strike-slip faulting. So if we look at a geological map of the region, we have Cabo de Gata down here, Malaga is off uh, to the west, there's uh, Velez Rubio, Granada is over to the west here as well. Then the B-ticks are basically this green region down through to the coast here. These are B-tick mountains. These pre b ticks are the, the thrust-stacked Jurassic and Cretaceous limestones where all the good sport climbing is. Uh, these regions here, the Sierra Nevada, Sierra de los Falabres, the Sierra de Gador, these are all the metamorphic basement rocks that were deformed and uplifted during the Africa-Iberian collision, during the Betic orogeny. You can see these are the red lines of the faults, so these thick red lines without arrows on them. These are thrust faults. There are thrust uh, faults separating each of these metamorphic units running through here and here and also within the pre and sub -betic. And these much straighter things, these are all strike-slip faults and the relative motion is shown on them. So this one had uh, east-west trending and there's motion. The north side is, is moving westwards. Here it's north-south fault and the west side is moving to the south. So that's consistent with the focal mechanism solution that we saw. So if we look at where the earthquake happened, it happens here to the south of Cabo de Gata, almost lined up with that fault we were just discussing. And the focal mechanism solution is here, this north-south plane it pretty much lines up with that fault and the displacement solution is consistent with the motion on that fault. If we overlay the aftershocks from this 5.3 earthquake, there's also a very clear set of earthquakes, aftershocks, which line up pretty much uh, northwest from the main 5.3 shock and go into the land at Cabo de Gata. So possibly it's actually, there's a second fault that has been activated because of that. It looks as though this uh, larger 5.3 event was pretty much at the inter intersection of these two faults. That's my best interpretation of everything we know about the seismics uh, of this 5.3 event and the aftershocks that happened in the 12 hours or so after the main event.